Good morning, everybody. Do you ever look up at the heavens and wonder about life on other planets? Well, on this date, August 25, in 1835, the New York Sun began a series of articles about life on the moon, supposedly based on science. And we know it today as the Great Moon Hoax. This is desert glass. It's found in Libya. It's an example of glass that existed before people knew how to make glass. Different theories exist where it came from. We do know that the pharaohs used it as uh, ornamental decoration. By the time we get to the Middle Ages, people knew about lenses and optics and glasses. Here are reading glasses especially once the printing press came and there was demand for glasses, the science of lenses and optics really took a big step forward. In the early 1600s, a Dutch lens maker took a concave lens and a convex lens, put them together, and invented the telescope. And people disagree on who exactly that was. It was not Galileo, though. People often think Galileo invented the telescope. But what he did is he took the telescope and made it into a serious scientific instrument. And here's a picture of one of Galileo's telescopes. And part of the story is he taught himself how to grind and make lenses. So the lenses he used were stronger than the ones that existed at the time. In 1610, Galileo published his first book, The Starry Messenger. Here's a picture of it. And he described the moon as being somewhat like the earth. It wasn't smooth and pristine like Aristotle taught, but it was full of craters and uneven surfaces. So, was there life on the moon? Well, a few years later, in 1638, a Brit by the name of Francis Godwin published a book in which Domingo Gonzalez, a Spaniard, went up to the moon because he had found some birds that were really strong and could fly really high. And up on the moon, he noticed people. And then in the 1700s into the 1800s, William Herschel, who invented some really big telescopes, thought he saw evidence on the moon that people might have lived there at one time or another. And his son, John, pictured here, became probably the most famous astronomer in the world in the 1800s. And if you look at the bullets, you can see how accomplished John Herschel was with observing the heavens, discovering things, writing about things. He was in the Royal Society in his 20s. And he's quoted in our story. So here's our event. August 25, 1835, the New York Sun writes about people on the moon and notice in this headline, it's based on the observations of John Herschel, again, the most famous astronomer in the world. But John Herschel had nothing to do with this. It was a complete fake. But supposedly on the moon were cities and towns, bizarre animals like unicorns or beavers without tails, and people. And they flew around using wings that looked a lot like bat wings. Now, this was a complete fake the guy who wrote it later said he meant it just as a satire. Thirty years later, Jules Verne wrote From the Earth to the Moon. Some of you have read it, and the guys who get up to the moon are shot up there in a big cannon. And uh, that cannon happens to be situated in Florida, where Cape Canaveral is. And later they land in Texas, and Mission Control was in Houston. And then you have H.G. Wells' book, The First Men in the Moon, in 1901, in which men get up to the moon because they have an anti-gravity matter. And up there they notice people living under the surface. And the next year, in 1902, George Malays did his short movie, A Trip to the Moon, in which the rocket actually gets stuck in the eye of the man in the moon. And this becomes an iconic image. So those of us of a certain age remember when President Kennedy pictured here announced that we would send a man to the moon by the end of the decade, by the end of the 1960s. And uh, we followed the space race, didn't we, if we were old enough then? And of course, we recall when the men went on to the moon, and you wonder, when they were there, did they expect to see moon people looking at them? 
from behind the lunar rocks.